Hello everyone, welcome to another BDS video. Today is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a tech video, but talking about something we haven't spoke yet. So you'll be looking at interesting things on this screen. Not only a messy hair that I carry with me every day, uh, but things that are in here. So currently in here, there's a lot of numbers. This is all the, when we were developing the, the Valvetronic stuff, when we measured the, the modified mills, see what they did, when we found they didn't do anything. And then we developed our, our Valvetronic arms, the, the way everything works. So today, before we jump into that, we got the dyno printout of an engine before and after the, um, the Valvetronic mods. So down here, we have a little bit of a loss because we haven't finished calibrating the ECU fully on the lower loads. This uh, is, is a lot harder than people think to calibrate stock ECU on very low RPM. Um, so we need to spend a little bit more time on this end, but it's, it's going to be done at some point. It's running a bit too rich um, in here. So we can address that and then issue the, the power should match what it was. But uh, then from as little as this is what RPM? 3,500. We start making slightly more and then the torque curve just holds and stays higher all the way till the limiter. And the higher the RPM, the more noticeable the gap is. So uh, this, it's, uh, it reflects directly on the average power. What is the average power? So the average power is how much power you have under a certain area of the curve. In this case, we are between four and a half to 7,000 RPM. So between these RPMs, the average power went from 256 to 263. This is a respectable gain, especially because average power is actually how much faster the car is going to be. So we're now going to move to the other part of the, the graph to show you exactly how does it affect the duration. So, in here now, on this screen, we have a, a graph with the duration versus the degree on the eccentric shaft that the Valvetronic has. So, from here, at zero degrees, it's when it's fully open to the maximum valve lift request. And then down here, it's when it, I start backing it up by a certain amount of degrees, as you can see, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. This is the degrees backed up from fully opened. So, as you can see, on the stock Valtronic arm, this is the duration. So the valve event at one mil, this is measured on the valve, okay? Um, and on the top is our one. As you can see in here, when we are on maximum request on the stock uh, cam, we have a duration on the, not stock cam, the stock uh, rock, uh, Valtronic arm, we have a duration of 204 degree at one mil. Uh, this will be around 245 degree of total duration. Then with the BDS arm, we have 226 degree at one mil, which would be around 268 of, um, of uh, total duration. Now, as you can see, the curve is stronger everywhere. Like, it always has a lot more duration because when I created this modification to the arms, my main aim was to reduce the amount of waste the system itself has. So when I was studying the, the Valvetronic and found the way it actually worked, I've noticed the camshaft has a lot more duration than what the system brings. So the camshaft duration measured at one mil is around 270 degree at one mil and that would be a massive cam so if you have that one to one ratio on duration you would have a very very large cam that's like race car territory um, but because of the way the valtronic works that uh, duration is lost on motion so this is why you created 
our Valtronic arms to reduce some of the waste, but we didn't want to overdo it and then cause a problem instead of, a, of an upgrade. So we went conservative with it. Now, in terms of lift, this, not this one, this is the lift you have, the blue one on the stock arm, and this is with the BDS arm. Now, as you can see, the difference is big everywhere. Now, there's one thing we have found with this. Um, they can be a bit tricky to control idle, and we've seen, like, in all the cars, it's, um, if you leave the valve tronic on, the car tends to, to have a, a bit of a rough idle. Um, like when you fit a big cam, so it's just exposing more valve area. And the reason doesn't come as much from the lift itself, because in here, even when it's fully released, still has more lift than uh, on the stock arm, but is mostly because of the duration. So if you see it, that very little lift we have on our arms we have 70 degree of duration while in here there's zero duration so in here actually there's no valve opening because the valve when the thing is fully fully dialed back on the stock arms it has no lift at all so you can go literally to zero with it with our one it cannot actually go to zero but the duration is where it has the the most uh, impact now on the mapping we we can uh, erase that part of it. However, it comes at the sacrifice of five MPGs. So from the testing we have done uh, with the Valtronic off, the MPGs, were they changed by five MPGs. So the car was five MPG worse with the Valtronic off. I don't think it's a, a big difference considering also the performance gain and how much more you can get from it. Remember, this gain is all through the modification of just one cam so let's say you put in just a bigger cam on the intake we're going to follow suit with this with an exhaust cam that we are currently already developing now one thing uh, after studying this Valtronic in detail that we we came very quickly to the conclusion doesn't matter what approach you do to it from the moment you change the lift on the cam you are going to affect the the idle on this because of the way the Valtronic works let's say if we went for a bigger cam, if we just increase duration, wouldn't have a problem, but you always want to add a bit more lift. Um, so you cannot really do that without affecting it. So the only way to really go around it is to have a cam made with the same lift as stock, but with more duration. But then we would not have seen as much of a gain as we did. So. We have a gain of 10% in duration, which is very respectable, is what, what normally most uh, bolt-on cams bring to the table. So it's like this does pretty much the same. So it just uses the cam more efficiently while increasing the lift. But due to the design of the Valtronic, if you want to keep the Valtronic working and have like a good idle quality, you cannot really do it. If you, uh, and gain lift at the same time. You can only change the duration, but not the lift. With our arm, it affects both because it changes the, the geometry of the system. Um, if you've seen the video of uh, us explaining how the Valtronic works, you'll understand why when you change the lift, it will change all across the curve. Um, and this is it. So yeah, our roller arms, if you keep it on a, on a road car, like, once Valtronic is off, again, the only downside is really just the MPGs. But if you have it as just a performance car, I don't think you would really have a problem with it. So we leave you guys with it to think of. If you want to see more videos like this explaining uh, this a bit more in detail, I'm not going to go too deep to the point we reveal exactly what was done on the arms, as you might expect. But now we just shown you like what it does on the power curve itself, we shown you the graphs of um, the, the, the duration change and the graph with the lift change. Therefore, you already have plenty of information on it. Thank you for watching. 
and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.